Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. So behind me is the um, house where Henry Hallam lived um, most of his uh, adult life, his townhouse. He had a house in the countryside as well. Anyway, so I'm on Wimpole Street in London in the Marlebone area, as it is named after this church, St. Mary Le Bone. The Bone uh, is really referred to the Tyburn River, which used to flow through here. It's all built over now. Anyway, Hallam was born in uh, 1777, if I got that right, uh, son of a clergyman. I can't remember where he was born, actually, but um, his uh, father had high up positions in the Church of England. He never became a bishop, but he was Dean of Bristol at some sort of position in the cathedral. I don't quite understand it. And later, a Canon of Windsor. So an ordinary clergyman would call the Reverend, whatever it is, if you're a canon, you're a particularly senior clergyman. And of course, Windsor with Windsor Castle was um, a very important place to be a canon of. So people who got that position often got preferment, but his father was never raised to the Episcopate. Now, the Anglican clergy had very high social status in that time. They didn't always have that much money. They were always definitely at least middle class, sometimes considered upper class. Um, and the salary depended completely according to the parish. If it was a poor rural parish, the salary would be quite low. If it was a very wealthy London parish, it would be sky high. It was the, the church was as corrupt as hell. It's completely nepotistic. It's often about who you knew. Um, anyway, so that's why he was able to, go to, to afford to go to Eton. There are not many clergymen's sons at Eton today, I can tell you. Um, and from there he went to uh, Christchurch, uh, Oxford. Uh, so he graduated at the age of 22 and he went on to read for the bar, so he was called to the bar, although it was quite informal in those days, hanging around the, um, the inns of court. I don't remember which inn he was a member of. There are four inns of court. You want to be a barrister here. That's a lawyer. Lincoln's Inn, Gray's Inn, Middle Temple or Inner Temple. Um, and then do a pupillage, which you had to pay to do, as in be an assistant to someone who's already uh, um, a well-established barrister and do six months with this barrister, do six months with the other barrister, they're both your masters. Having successfully completed that, you are um, you can find a tenancy, that's a place in the chambers, um, a, 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 a barrister's office, because several barristers would share an office, or a chambers as it's called, share the service of the clerks, equivalent of the secretaries, and then you can practice. So you mostly practice in, in, uh, around Oxford, but even if you're practicing around Oxford, you must be a member of an inn in London, even if your chamber's actually in Oxford or elsewhere. Um, so he married, I don't remember the name of his wife's name, now they had at least two sons, I'm not sure if they had any daughters actually, but um, so um, Henry Hallam is best known as a historian, um, writing about uh, the Middle Ages, writing a constitutional history um, of England, um, the trouble is it's quite bland, it's quite stilted these days, now he sometimes writes in a, a thematic manner, which is perhaps quite sensible, looking at culture or what was going on um, in uh, amongst the intelligentsia, what's going on in, in, in literature, not just high politics, not very interested in economics or, or, or um, the Industrial Revolution, um, and uh, studying with the, the, the Near East as well. So it's, it's completely fallen out of fashion, his style would be regarded as too challenging these days. Um, anyway, he had lots of Whig friends and he's been accused of having a Whig slant in his writing, but who's never politically active. He got a sinecure commissioner for stamps so nice for him. So he certainly had a fat income, as you can see from the house he lived in here. Um, anyway, it's perhaps surprising to become a clergyman, but being a clergyman was incompatible with being a barrister. I don't know why. Since the Middle Ages, clergy were not allowed to be called to the bar. And in the Middle Ages, most other professionals were also clergy. If you're an accountant, you're also a priest, or occasionally a monk. If you were a doctor, you might well be a priest as well. If you're a dentist, if you're an engineer, if you're an architect. Of course, in the Middle Ages, these um, professions were very informal, often no exams as such, some sort of apprenticeship. So then the uh, next thing was his son is Arthur Henry Hallam, the very famous literary figure who uh, went to Eton and went to Trinity, I think uh, Trinity Cambridge, if I got that right, a good friend of Alfred Lord Tennyson, and he was a budding poet. But um, Arthur Henry Hallam, he died at the age of 22. You might know Lord Tennyson's poem, In Memoriam, which he dedicated to A.H.H., his friend Arthur Henry Hallam, as in son of this chap. Um, so uh, you can see his portrait at Eton because a lever was painted. So when the school thinks a boy who's about to leave the school is very distinguished, they might request if he would have an oil painting executed of him and then donated to the school and hang there forever after. You can see Arthur Henry Hallam. Um, it's just off, um, what's it called? I mean, election hall where the King Scholars get sworn in by the provost. Um, so what else apart from um, Hallam? Then um, 
Yeah, so he lived on until 1859. His other son predeceased him as well. Anyway, that is Henry Hallam. Toodaloo.